Hello and welcome to this Black Talk Radio News Commentary. My name is Scotty Reed, coming to you from behind the enemy lines of USA Inc., where they still practice in slavery and, of course, institutional racism. Got to have uh, racism to practice race-based slavery. So this is Black History Month, and although I get the argument that black people should be I don't know necessarily if we want to say celebrating black history because some of that history ain't worth celebrating, but we should be the study, studying history that our direct ancestors have made, especially in the last, let's say, just say five generations. Um, okay, so we, we should always be studying that at every opportunity, but Black History Month, uh, as established by the federal government, isn't really meant just for black people. It's meant to teach racist white people that y'all ain't all that. Y'all think y'all y'all been told these stories, taught these stories in history, and it's been whitewashed. And you're not seeing all the con- contributions of black people, Africans, um, descendant people, um, mixed race people, whether you're talking African, indigenous, African, and European, whether, you know, and these people struggle for freedom on this continent and being at every uh, crucial moment in U.S. history, whether we're talking about American Revolutionary War, uh, where I think up to one third of the troops were black and also served longer than regular uh, uh, troops in the Continental Army, you know, uh, the average length of service. African Americans, although they weren't known by that at the time, of course, um, but they served longer. We always been, and that is not being taught in history. That's what Black History Month is supposed to be about, teaching white people the contributions of these people that y'all think of as N-words in their history which has includes nothing but being enslaved, and then you're ignorant, and, and you uh, have these white supremacist uh, beliefs. But I want to talk about uh, this this statement that was made by Ilyasha Shabazz, who is the daughter of Malcolm X. For those that's catching the video version of this podcast, um, if you'll just bear with me, let me read this. It's crucial for citizens to understand that American history is also black history, Ilyasha said if the massacres in Tulsa, Oklahoma and Rosewood, Florida were taught in high school U.S. history classes to be as an American as the Boston Tea Party, for example, more citizens will understand the need for reparations. So I guess what she's saying there in that statement is if you were just taught about all the barbaric, inhumane um, attacks on black people, on indigenous people, on people based on their nationality and just how vicious your grandparents were and great grandparents were, then you wouldn't be, you know, sitting up here talking about pay reparations for what? Um, because the United States government, the federal government, um, is the one that was charged with enforcing um, the U.S. constitutional rights of African Americans after the Civil War, and they failed to do so and allowed them to fall prey. Um, to more slavery through the prisons and court systems, as well as, um, you know, uh, deny them their, their rights uh, to vote and things along those natures. But when she was talking about history, uh, let me pull the comment back up. American history is also black history. There is no uh, American history without talking about uh, black people, and they try to erase you. So, let me just give you a quick anecdotal story. I was helping my uh, grandson two days in a row. He's doing these re- uh, reading comprehension lessons. And it's Black History Month. So you would think, and maybe they will. I don't know. We're still early in the month. and But they do these biographies is basically what you can just call them. Um, about six or seven paragraphs. And he did one on Thomas Jefferson. And then he did one the next day on George Washington. So I'm helping him because he has to answer questions, multiple choice questions, and then, you know, write sentences for another question about what he just read or the passage on George Washington or Thomas Jefferson. So I'm reading the whole thing right. And so, you know, 
being that I have always been a student in history, and most people know it now, but it's not being taught in school. Nobody can deny that Thomas Jefferson um, was married and he purchased his sister's, I mean his wife's half-sister from his wife's father, so his father-in-law, he had produced this child with a, a African descended woman. He was enslaving on his plantation. And then he sells her to his son-in-law, Thomas Jefferson, and he pr proceeds to just treat her as a, a sexual object the rest of her life, producing many, many, many children. None of this is mentioned in this six, these six or seven uh, paragraphs or biography of Thomas Jefferson being taught the fourth graders, now I know you have to word stuff to where it's not so graphic and stuff, but they painted this man as as well as George Washington as just the greatest human beings to ever have, have lived and they are responsible for all these people having or we having freedom and liberty today while ignoring the fact that these men were taking the freedom and liberty away and supported slavery globally on a global scale as well as they were racist. You know, and and so, you know, for example, if you're talking about Thomas Jefferson, now it, talk, it talked about how he heard Patrick Henry complaining about the taxes that the American colonists had to pay to the to the British, and so uh, and then he was, um, you know, also talking about freedom. And Thomas Jefferson was in school at the time, uh, um, in college, a young young boy who had inherited a lot of wealth. Um, from his father passing away and taking over his father's estate. Of course, only men could uh, inherit property back then. So he was set up for life already right there. But he hearing Patrick Henry out there talking about give me liberty or give me death. And this is supposed to have inspired him to come up with the Bill of Rights and, and writing the Declaration of Independence where he talking about all men are created equal and endowed by their creator while he is enslaving people at that very time. And the text doesn't point out the contradiction and saying, and saying that um, Thomas Jefferson's history is complicated. While he is known for writing the Declaration of Independence and, and is known as a great document or commentary on freedom and liberty, but at the same time as his father before him, he was a, a slaver and a human trafficker who also, you know, took sexual liberties with those he were enslaving. I mean, again, you, the teachers, the educators, they could educate it in a way such for fourth graders that that history it's not just black history it's american history and so when you write about thomas jefferson and george washington and leave out the victims of slavery that they held in bondage in the the uh uh rapey relationship that thomas jefferson had with sally him you're erasing black history you're racing black people and black lives matter. Their lives matter. And so I felt some kind of way and I was upset about that. And then, so I came across, you know, her making this statement that, uh, let's pull it up again. What did she say? American history is also black history. You can't separate the two. There is no separation. Black people were here from the founding of these colonies, a big part of the revolutionary war on both sides. And definitely uh, the deciding force when it comes to uh, the Civil War. So I live in Gaston County, North Carolina. The Gaston County School Board, they just had uh, this last election. People were elected to it. And sometimes, you know, as a black person, you think this stuff is on purpose, especially when you live in a county where it's 80, 85 percent white and they're all Trump. Majority of them are Trump voters. Straight up, you know, right wing fascists and neo Confederates. So, again, this is the microaggressions and then, you know, the brainwashing of not just little black children and erasing them from history, but the brainwashing of these white children as well. And then we wonder why we have this societal or generational curse of racism and slavery in this land. All right, I'm going to leave it there. 
Please continue to support independent black media. Make a donation to the nonprofit Black Talk Media Project. You can find those donate buttons on Black Talk Radio Network. Dot com. Support independent media, y'all. Peace and blessings to all.